My name is Taisha, and I'm here speaking with Shalon Davis. Do I have the permission? Do, do I have permission to re record this interview? Yes, you can. Can you please spell your name as you would like it to appear on the project? S H A L A U N D A V I S. Shalon Davis. Tell me about how you grew up. Well, I'm, I'm from Holmes County in Pickens, Mississippi. I was born there, and when I turned four, I lost my father. And we were forced to move here for, to have uh, fam support from my family. Describe a tropical day from your childhood. Hmm. Typical day for my childhood. Get up, wash my face, brush my teeth, get dressed. As a child, I can remember my mom leaving, going to work. And my she would cook breakfast before, and it would be my dad, myself, and my uncle, my cousin rather, and. We would have breakfast, they would clean up, and me and my other, my older sister right over me would go out, watch cartoons, either go outside and play, be children. Later on through the day, you get something to eat, you go back to playing. Later on, mom would come home from work. And she would do dinner and eat and get ready to start the day all over again. That would be a typical day as a child. How do you compare the way you and others raise children today with the way you were raised? Hmm. The way I was raised back then, no matter, it didn't matter who got on to you for doing whatever it was that you did. Nowadays, well, back then it was, uh, it took a village to raise and that village could do everything. Nowadays, there is no village. Because I feel now if you say something to somebody else's child, it could cause fighting. It could go as far, well, it could start off with verbal altercations. It could go from there to fighting. And it could end up with possible gun violence. So this day and time, me, myself, I wouldn't say anything to anybody else's child. I would go to, and you would want to go to the parent and say something to the parent about what the child had done. But this day, you, I would be scared to go. I picked my battles. Where back then, it didn't matter who seen you do it, who got onto you. And I feel like it, if it was, that way now we wouldn't have as much killing and all of that. It would be totally different. Okay. Can you paint a picture of the neighborhood you lived in? As a child? Yes. Yeah. As a child after we moved here to Jackson. Well, before we moved to Jackson. We were in a, it was a country setting where we could go outside in the early morning. And you know, we didn't have, my mom didn't have to worry about me being snatched or taken because somebody was always out. If it wouldn't miss be across the street, it would probably be Miss uh, Holiday next door. It was always somebody to watch and you didn't have to worry about anything. 
you get up, you can play, you didn't have to worry about the cars racing up and down the street, we didn't have to worry about next door neighbors shooting, or any of that. Those to me were the good days. After we moved here to Jackson, after my father passed, it was, it was still kind of the same way. But as I got older, it became a little bit more to where your parent wanted to know where you were going. We knew to be back home by the time the street lights came on. We knew not to leave off of the street. Rather, now that you don't even leave out the yard, now that you let me know where you're going. And as I graduated, as I got got older, it became to the point to where, okay, you go. Can I go around the corner and play? You go around the corner and play, be back before the street lights come on. And that was still where we had a little leeway to go and play. But as I got got as it, I got older, it became to be gang related. Drugs were being introduced. You were you were growing up and you were learning what things were. And now being an adult, having my own child, you tend, I, I worry a whole lot as far as, as far as just walking outside. I worry because the neighborhood that I was, I grew up in here, it, it was Verdition, and now it is, it's very, it's very different because I'm scared to allow my child to go outside without me. He can't go outside and be a kid because you don't know where the gunfire is going to come from. You don't know if a car flying up and down the street is going to lose control or if that person is on drugs and he's going to pass out, run up in the yard, you don't know. So it's not safe to, being a kid is not safe. You can't go out and sit and play in your yard. You can't do like I did as a child where we could get in, the, in our driveway and play kickball. Get in a field and play kickball and you can't do that now. It's not safe. Because you don't know who's going, who's beefing with who. We can't go outside and just do family things. In order to do a family thing, I have to go down, down to Flowood. And I'm from Jackson, but I go to Flowood to let my child play and be a child. Okay, what... Would you change in this community? In my community? Oh. If I could change one thing, it would be to see unity. And that's because you don't have it. It used to be where it didn't matter who you were or how we, nobody looked at, people didn't look at you different for not having, we were all a family, no matter what. If I was at your house playing and your mom cooked, I knew I had a meal or vice versa. If you were at my house playing and my mom cooked, you, I knew I had that meal. But nowadays, it's not even safe to say you have a friend. With all the turmoil in the world today, you don't have friends. And it's sad because that's not how I was I grew up. And I would like my child to have, I would love for him to have that same thing as I had growing up. 
But this day and time, the way the world is now, you can't. So unity would be my thing if I could change one thing. Well, we could all get together. It wouldn't worry about you came from this side of the track, so you stay on this this side of town. Just get together, come, be one. Where you don't have to worry about Billy Joe getting mad, pulling out a gun. Sit down, talk it out. And now you can't because talking lead, people don't know how to do things the civil way anymore. Is there anything you would like to add that I didn't ask about? Hmm. Well, I was raised, like I say, I was raised by my mom once my father passed and we moved here to Jackson. I was raised in a single fam, a single parent home. I had, I had eight, uh, seven other siblings, well, eight other siblings. It was seven more girls and one boy. But once we moved to moved here to Jackson, one, two, three, three stayed back in our, in the country where we were from in Holmes County, up in Peaks, well, Pickens and Lexington, and we moved here, and, but the remainder came, so the biggest bulk was still here in Jackson, and it was just fun, growing up somewhere totally different, we used to think it was a we was going somewhere, coming down 55 to Jackson. We thought we were going somewhere really out of town and we were just coming like an hour up the road. But we thought that was a trip. So we were we used to always look forward as kids to come down to come down to grandma house, granddaddy house, and just to see everybody else. But after we moved here, stay for, oh, it's been a while, all my life actually to just see how it has changed. And I know it's changed everywhere, but if I could just blink my eye, I would just wish that we could all just, a lot of the, all, all of the killing would stop. Because you just, you never know. And majority of the time, it's just the innocent bystanders who are taken. The ones that was in intended to be hit don't get it. They never get hit. It's just the innocent people. So just the senseless killings. Put down a gun. Put your hand up. Fight it out. And let that be that. And when I turned four, I lost my father. And like I say, he bit the sausage. He got up, he grasped his chest, and when he grasped his chest, he fell. That was it. And I can remember my uh, uncle telling me to go go next door and get, get some help. And my I can remember my sister ran out, and she went across the street and got this uh, lady named Miss B. And they called 911. And so we were instructed to stay across the street. But I can remember coming back. He was laying on the floor between in the hallway. And I can remember coming back and he was laying on the floor. And only I got I remember getting down telling him, Dad, get up. Dad, get up. And he never did. And I remember the paramedics coming getting him and you know as a child you see all this but he was he was actually dead when they took him away from the house and shortly after we buried him we moved from Holmes County here to Jackson and we came to stay with my grandmother and it, we in a I, it's not eight or nine of us in a two bedroom shotgun house 
But back then, you knew family was everything. They st stuck together no matter what. If it was 50 people in the house, 50 of us was going to be in the house. It wasn't no bickering, wasn't no arguing, no fuss, no fighting. Because I can remember me and my nephew sleeping in the bed together with my grandmother. And I was I would be scared to get up and go to the bathroom at night because they had rats. And I had never seen a rat. And I was from the country, but I'd never seen a rat. But eventually you get over that. You grow past I grew past it. And we would get out in the yard and play. It wasn't no fussing, no fighting, because granted didn't play it. We all was happy. And now you don't see that amongst family. And not even with my family. After my mom passed, me and my baby sister, we've always been close. And after I had helped her raise her kids, they're at the age of 36, I had my baby. And with them, I guess, they were so used to me being that person that they could call for any and everything to where, I don't know if I, it was like a disappointment to them for me to become pregnant with my child or they was just being selfish. But me and my baby sister has always been very close. And to hear my sister tell me to abort my child was a very hurt feeling. And her reason for telling me to abort my child was because I was sickly. But like I've always told them, they know I've always wanted a house full of children. Because as a child, I didn't feel like I was getting that love from home. And I would always say I wanted a house full of children out in the country with a white picket fence a dog and a cat, and we would just be, a, be one big happy family. But God didn't see fit for me to have a house full of kids. He blessed me with one. After I was told by man I wouldn't have any. I wasn't gonna be able to have him. I have one son, and he is my boy. He, he is a blessing. And to hear my sister tell me to abort him was very devastating, a devastating blow to me because I never once told her to avoid either one of her kids and she had both of hers at a very young age. But I was there to make sure they wanted for nothing. With both of them, I can remember working to make sure she had what she wanted, not what she needed, but what she wanted for her girls. And for me to be pregnant, get pregnant years later after I done raised her children, I think when I got pregnant with my son, my sister, her oldest daughter was in college at USM. And she was happy and sad at the same time. And I could understand her more being a, being a teenager, you are a young lady, Cause she'd be like, T.T., well, who gonna help me now? But my words was to her. You were my second baby. Chris would be my third baby. So she kind of came on board. She would come home every weekend. She always brought something home for him. I can remember right before I had him, she brought this purple and yellow dog home to him and when he I, I've all, I put it in the crib and it sat there until he was born once he was born that became his soother because he would get that dog and he would lay there in the bed that was his thing when he would be mad and would didn't want to go to sleep he wanted to get out of the bed he would get the puppy he throw the puppy on the floor, I pick him up, put him back in the bed, he throw it back out. 
I get it and get him and get once I got him out, he want that puppy. And he was we would he would get in the bed and go straight on to sleep. But just because and after I had him, I don't when I had my baby shower, I don't think any of my my like sisters and brothers, I had a couple of cousins and the godmother and her grandbaby, her granddaughter, and her son was there, but and it may have been nine or ten people there, but it, to me, it felt like I had a house full of people because I knew I had people there who cared. Surrounded by love. Yes, yes, surrounded by love. And none of my my baby sister, her her, her youngest child, and my cousin and my aunt and the cousin, they all went out to eat. But my niece Christy stayed there with me. And I can remember when Christy got pregnant. Christy called me. I was the first somebody to know that she was pregnant. And I made her tell her mom. And it was an issue behind that. But my thing was, she wasn't young like her mom was. She had finished school. She graduated in the top 10. When she was, and she was just about finished. What college at USM? But that didn't, it didn't stop her. It made her have to move back home, but it didn't stop her. Because she even thought she wanted to be a nurse. She went through Heinz. That wasn't what she wanted. She went through homes. And after uh, being turned down for the nursing program, she went to Jackson, she started back up, went to Jackson State for teaching and it was kind of hard with the practices and when Kobe hit she was then she was able to finish her uh, teaching she's now a second year teacher at um, Boy Elementary and in the process of getting her at getting her finished. I had already started. I graduated from Heinz in eight December of eighteen. And that pushed me to go ahead and pursue my career in teaching. So this year, this August coming in, well this summer, I'll take the practices to uh, become to do my student teaching at Jackson State and I will then after passing my practice I will then start my student teaching of, uh, in the spring of 20 uh, 24 and is I will be graduating in the spring of 24 if I let it sit and nothing happens, I will become a certified teacher myself. And I am a teacher assistant right now at Jackson Public School. I have a total of 19 years. And in six more years, I can retire. But I don't think I want to retire in six more years, in the six years. I think I'm gonna give them nine years, retire and open up my own daycare center in the city of, between Bolton and, well, Utica and Edwards, because there are not a lot of daycare centers down through there from uh, Edwards. You will have to come all the way back to Clinton and from Raymond, well, from Utica, you would have to come all the way back to Raymond. So it is my my dream to open up a daycare center in between uh, Utica and Edwards, so that people, so that young ladies, I ain't gonna say people, so that young ladies who are having problems getting daycare for work will be able to 
utilize my facility and it's I would like to have it set up to where it would be based upon your income or if you received a voucher I will take that but basically I I think it would be called a nonprofit organization because it would be based on if you have the income but I, I it's right now I don't know how what it would be how you would work it but I also have my um stepmom that would help write my proposal and help me get through everything get everything situated so within the next nine years I will be 58 in the next nine years 58 and my plan is to be um, become certified in 24 a certified teacher and give the, my nine will give my it'll be nine years because I I have 28 years therefore I can retire with uh, years but not age and I could still run my daycare center and help others because I've had a lot of blessings along my way along the way helping with my child and I would like to return that back to the public so that's it. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I feel like that's a good idea and good goal that you have set for yourself. And basically, about the daycare part, I feel like that's that will be a good thing to do to help out throughout the community because you know most. Parents right now are young adults who don't have the support or help that the average woman didn't have. Yes, and I feel like as a woman, we should stick together and help uplift instead of tear down. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get a lot of support, but I feel like if I could help just one person, I feel justified. Mm -hmm. I've always kept kids, and at 17, 18, I was basically keeping kids. I, my uh, people used to always know me and my niece from school as their mother, but I wasn't their mother. And after they found out, a lot of people were like, who, what? But those were just my nieces, but I was there for everything because my sister at the time was in hair school but I and I made sure I was there they never missed a beat field trips I was there programs I was there any I was there because I didn't want her to have to miss going to school doing what she had to do to better herself for her kids so if I've always worked two jobs where she didn't have to wear but she didn't have to work. She was going to school. And my older sister, she is always they used to stay together and she would help her too. But that I just feel like I'm always that shoulder. I'm that one you call because for the long, for 36 years all of them, even my, ba my baby sister had a baby and I didn't. Because my son is 11, and her baby girl, Amber, is 30, 30, 31, 31. And my baby's 20 years under her. So for 20 years, it, well, she they had to adjust, really, when I had my baby. And, like, I would ask. And I asked just to see what they would say. Hey, can y'all keep Christmas while I go to school tonight? No. But nobody ever thought about when I kept them. So I, I sit back and it used to hurt me a lot. But I know it don't bother me now because he is old enough now if I have to go somewhere for a couple of hours to be there. And I've trained him. You don't open the door. Somebody knock. 
He got he has a cell phone. He can call somebody to come and check on him if he feel like it's somebody trying to get in there on him. So I think I've done my part as a mother for a lot of my nieces and nephews and as my um as far as my child. I feel like we're in a better place now. I used to um I used to be in a place in my life where I felt like I had to have a boyfriend to feel whole. And now, the only thing I need is God. We, me and my baby, we at home. Now he's a, he'll he love to go. If it ain't nowhere but to the store, he wanna go get some uh, juice. And he don't care where it is. Can you take me to the park? Can we just go riding? So now I, I'm teaching him how to drive. So he could help once he's old enough to get a driver's license to go run my errand. <laughs> What are your hopes for the children in your community? Hope for the children in my community is I just, I would like to see them graduate and make something, make a better life than what we, than what I had. Hope they start their family and be better mothers and fathers. Hope they learn something from their parents and can just go through life and do family things. And if you happen to become a single parent, be your best at it. How do you predict that parents or caretakers will be raising children in the generations to come? Ooh, that's a hard one. This day and age, a lot of kids are having kids. And they, are, they don't know how to be a mother or a father at a young age because... They weren't really taught properly because parents are having kids are becoming parents at as early as 13 years old. So I just hope and pray that there is somebody that is older and understand what it is to be a parent and it's able to teach that younger person so that we could bring their village back where you I, where you, you wouldn't get mad if I said something to your child and I wouldn't get mad if you said anything to my child Oh, how do I put it? Bring that village back. Because I can rem I can always remember my mom saying it took a village to raise a child. It took that whole village. And when I was younger, I didn't understand, but I, under I knew if I got in trouble on my way home that it had already gotten to the from the school all the way down. And by the time you made it home, you then had two or three whoopings. But it didn't matter because your parent knew and trusted these people that got onto you. Where now the grandmother could ba could barely say something to a child without the mother being aggressive 
And if his grandmother can't chastise him, how can your neighbor chastise him if he's doing wrong? Him or her if they're doing wrong. So, I would just hope that someone would, one person in this generation would listen to an older person on the aspects of raising a child from the way they were brought up and they brought their children up to this generation we have now. Not saying all young people are like that, but 99.9% don't want you to say nothing to their children because me as a teacher, you have a child that goes home and lie and that parent comes back with that child she wants to show out and wants to fight opposed to coming in like a respectable young lady and saying okay well Sydney came home today and said that she was unhappy about Johnny hitting her and when she came and told the teacher, the teacher told her to let me let me ask little Johnny, what did he do to you? Or what made Johnny hit you? What did you do to little Johnny? Trying to get broken down to the point to where everybody wanted to know and was trying to take care of the business to see what happened amongst both of the kids. So the mama want to jump on the teacher because the teacher told them to shake hands and apologize. She, so now their parent is mad because she felt that child was supposed to be suspended. But when it all boiled down, it was just an accident on the playground. And they jumped to the parent ready to fight. She ain't trying to talk it out and come see what happened. She coming to school to fight it out. And when it all sat down and your child told the truth, there you go looking crazy because you can came up here to the school, you can cuss me out. You don't even know. Your child came home and told a lie. So then, as a parent, you have to be slow to react and more eager to listen and find out what it is instead of, because your baby done said, X, Y, Z hit me. And the teacher made us hug or shake hands and say we were sorry. She was mad because she don't feel like my child should have said, had to say they were sorry. Well, out of all actuality, it was just an accident. That's very understanding and basically a lot of information to take in. Yes, it was. Because nowadays, as you say, you can't say something to another person's child without that person getting offended when that child is in the wrong. Yes. Instead of correcting that child, the parent is more upset at you because you basically said something to that child and now there's a big conflict. Yes. That's where the village is gone. Mm -hmm. Very understandable. But has this interior come to an end with you like to add anything else? No, that would be it. Thank you. You're welcome, Miss Davis. I would like to thank you for participating within this interview. And you're welcome.